Welcome everyone to part one of the sci-fi first-person shooter tutorial series. If you haven't already seen the showcase video for the tutorial series, I recommend you watch that before starting the series so that you know what we're aiming to achieve by the end of it. This video will go over installing the Epic Games Launcher, also installing the latest version of Unreal Engine, which as of this time is 4.26, We'll cover creating a new project, selecting a template to start with, and getting our project ready for the remainder of the series. It will be basic for those of you that are somewhat familiar with the Unreal Engine, but hopefully detailed enough for anyone to follow, including those with no experience. If you already have the engine installed and are familiar with how to navigate it, then you can fast forward to the timestamp down below. First, let's start off by going over what Unreal Engine is. Unreal Engine 4 is the world's most open and advanced real-time 3D creation tool. It's been used by thousands of studios across the globe for creating video games with standouts such as Fortnite, the Mass Effect series, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Kingdom Hearts 3, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, etc. Unreal Engine has also been used for high production film projects such as The Mandalorian on Disney+, and it's been used for real-time automotive demonstrations and architectural visualization. It's becoming more and more prominent in other industries each year as well. For this series, we'll be focusing on the blueprint visual scripting aspect of the engine to create an interactive shooter, and we'll add the sci-fi setting near the end of the project. To get started, we'll need to install the Epic Games Launcher, so we'll need to head to unrealengine.com and click on the download link in the upper right corner. We'll be given two licensing options for the products that we create in the engine. For our intents and purposes, we'll eventually wish to create a video game that we can monetize, so we'll need to select the publishing license. If you don't wish to create video games, then the creator's license should be the option that you choose. Go ahead and install the Epic Games Launcher after downloading it. Launch it, create your own Epic Games account, or log into yours if you already have one. And now you should be on the home page for the Epic Games Launcher. In the last year or so, Epic Games has added and expanded the Epic Games Store so that you can use the launcher, just like Steam for example, if you wish to add friends or purchase games for your game's library. We're solely going to use the Unreal Engine tab during this tutorial though. Now that we have the launcher set up, we'll need to install the latest version of the Unreal Engine. To do this, click on the Libraries tab within the Unreal Engine window. Then select the plus icon, and the latest version of the engine will be added to your game versions. If you want to make sure that the latest version was added, you can click the drop down here and manually select the latest version before installing. Now we can install the latest version of the engine simply by clicking install. I already have it installed though, so I'm going to continue to the next step by creating a new project. I'll do this by launching the engine by hitting the launch button. Now the Unreal Project Browser has been launched and we can choose to open an existing project or create a new project. Each of these categories under the New Project section includes their own starter templates that you can try out sometime, but don't worry, they all open the same version of Unreal. We'll create a new project under the Games category, select the Games category and click Next. On this screen, the Games templates will be shown and we can select one of them to start our project with. We can also add these to our project later on if we need. We'll start our project with the first person template included so that we have a playable character with basic locomotion, a weapon, and the ability to shoot that weapon as soon as we start our project. Select the first person template and then click next. Lastly, we'll need to select our project settings. These can also be changed later in the project settings window. I'm just going to ensure that we don't include starter content for this project since we won't be needing those items. Let's give our project a name that will help identify which project it is. I'll name mine Sci-Fi First Person Shooter. Now we can finally create a project by clicking Create Project. And finally we have the engine up and we can begin organizing a project to get it ready for the rest of the series. If you're completely new to Unreal, there are a few basics that you'll need to know before we continue. The first thing that likely grabs your attention is the viewport in the middle of the screen. The viewport visually shows your current level in real time, and you can look around your level by right-clicking and moving the mouse. Or you can move around your level in the viewport by right-clicking and using WASD like any normal PC game. While moving, you can also use the Q key to lower yourself or the E key to raise yourself up. 
If you think the camera is moving too quickly, you can scroll the mouse wheel down while holding right click to slow down, or scroll the mouse wheel up while holding right click to speed the camera up. Alternatively, you can change the camera speed settings by using the camera speed options on the top right of the viewport and changing it here. The next basic item we'll need to cover is how to play test our level. Since we imported the first person shooter template, it should be ready to test out immediately. To do this, we can play the level in the editor simply by pressing the play button above the viewport. I immediately noticed that the input settings for our project are incorrect because we have to click on the viewport before our mouse is captured. See how I can hover over the viewport after I begin playing? But once I click on the viewport, now I can control my character. We'll be able to fix this easily, but let's put it on the back burner for now. To exit playing, we can hit the escape button on our keyboard, or if you want control of your mouse back, you can alt tab and just select the stop button above the viewport. Now that we have the basics out of the way, let's get our content in our project organized. On the bottom of the screen, we'll see our content browser that shows our focused folder. It's easier for me to visualize our folders with our sources panel. So let's show the sources panel in our content browser by clicking this button here. This will allow us to more easily see the organization of our folders in the engine. The content folder is our main folder for every Unreal project and will include every asset that you add to your project. We'll go ahead and organize the folders within this content folder in a way that makes them easy to navigate and easy to identify what's inside of them. I personally like to break up the folders by asset type so that we have all the meshes in one folder, all the animations in another, all the materials in another, etc. This works not only for me, but also helps colleagues I may be working with on a project. So let's go into our geometry folder and we can drag this meshes folder into our content folder. That brings it out of the geometry folder and into our content folder. If a folder like this is moved and it remains in the original folder, you can right click, select fix up redirectors in folder, and then delete it. Sometimes this happens, likely because items in that folder are still being loaded in memory. If we go into our meshes folder, we'll see that there's actually a material inside. So let's create a folder for materials by right clicking inside of the content folder and clicking on new folder and naming it materials. Now we can drag and drop the material from the meshes folder into the materials folder that we just created. There are two types of main meshes as well. So let's make two folders in our meshes folder, one for skeletal meshes and one for static meshes. Go ahead and right click on meshes, static meshes, and right click on meshes again for skeletal meshes. And we can go ahead and put our static meshes into the static meshes folder. Now that the geometry folder is empty, we can delete it by right clicking on it and selecting the delete option. Let's continue organizing our content by opening up the first person BP folder. And we can drag the blueprints folder into our content folder and the maps folder into our content folder. It looks like we have the same issue going on with blueprints that we had with the meshes folder, so right click, fix up redirectors, or alternatively we can save all. And now we should be able to delete the first person BP folder. And finally we can go into the first person folder, or we can drag animations into the content folder, drag audio into the content folder, and drag the textures into our content folder. We already have a folder for meshes, so we can go into the meshes folder and put the meshes into our meshes folder. But it looks like most of them are materials, so we can go ahead and select one, hold shift, select the other one on the end, and drag them into the materials folder. With our static mesh, we can go ahead and select it and drag it into our static meshes folder. And go back to the first person folder. Now the last two remaining folders have multiple subfolders. We'll just rename them with more detail and put them into the correct folders that we already have. Let's go ahead and open our FP weapon folder and we'll rename the materials folder to M underscore weapon. That way we know that the materials in this folder are for the weapon. And for the mesh, we can go ahead and rename the folder skeletal mesh weapon so that we know that the skeletal mesh for the weapon is inside of this folder. And lastly, we can rename the textures folder T underscore weapon. Once again, so we know that the textures for this weapon are inside of this folder. 
to quickly rename a folder, we can hit F2 and that will automatically allow us to rename it. Or alternatively, we can go ahead and right click and rename here. It will show you the shortcut on the right side. Now that these folders are correctly labeled, we can go ahead and just drag them exactly where they need to go. And lastly, we have our characters folder. And I know from creating the showcase project that we will not have any of the contents in these folders for long. So let's go ahead and keep them together in this folder so that we can delete them all together later on, really quickly. We can rename this folder by clicking on it and renaming it temp arms. And we'll just put it inside of our content folder so that we'll remember to delete it. If you plan on using the basic arm mesh for your final project, you can organize this folder exactly how we organize the rest of the content from the gun folder. Now we should be able to go back to our content folder, save all, and delete our first person folder. And we have a clean project. But for me, I like to spend just a little bit of extra time adding a visual component to the folders in our sources panel. If we right click on a folder, we do have the option to set the color of that folder. And I always set the color to the color of the content inside of it. For example, an animation sequence is green. So if we go ahead and right click on the animations folder and set the color, we can choose the eyedropper and select just that little bit of green there and click OK. Now I can visually see the green folder and it helps me navigate the folders more easily. I'll do the rest of the folders this way too. Purple for animations, blue for blueprints, orange for maps, a lighter green for materials, and there's a folder inside of materials that we can also select the same green so that they match. We'll use light blue for static meshes, pink for skeletal meshes, and I'll use light blue for the generic meshes folder as well. That seems to work for me. I'll choose a quick white for the temps folder that I want to get rid of later, and a deep red for textures. Excellent! That is a clean, organized, and visually stunning content browser. I think this is a good place to stop this video. We've covered how to install the Epic Games Launcher, install the Unreal Engine, getting a project started, playtesting and navigating, as well as setting up some basic folder organization in our content browser. In the next video, we'll set up our character so that it's not just the generic set of arms that comes with the first person template. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Joe Von D, here to help you think like a game developer. Stay tuned for the next video in the tutorial series.